Yeah, well, I think all of these words, um, I, I pretty much addressed them in my opening statement. Uh, a big mistake that Paul is making is to reify labels. The word logic, for example. He's reifying the word logic. He's making it into a thing, He's doing the same thing with morality, talking as if there were as if morality were some absolute thing. When I was very careful to define these words not as things, but as descriptions of the way a certain organ functions. And my good analogy is digestion. I don't think Paul believes that there is a huge cosmic capital D digestion out in the universe somewhere that has to be justified before we can talk about it. I mean in some infinite regress of loop of justifying digestion. Well, how do we know digestion? Does digestion digest? It's like asking, is logic logical? Those are stupid questions. You, you, you're asking one what question in one logical sphere up to another logical sphere. Uh, here's just one trivial, trivial example. He mentioned odd numbers and even numbers. We know that in the set of whole numbers, every even number is separated from its, its neighbor by a distance of two, by absolute two. By definition, that's what it means to be an even number. Uh, well, by definition, even numbers have that property. <clears throat> and therefore, that, can we say that the set of even numbers, that whole set, is therefore separate from other sets of numbers by a distance of two? That's a stupid question. It's taking the finding from one logical sphere, pulling it up by its bootstraps, and trying to pretend that it has some kind of meaning in a higher logical sphere of thinking. Well, of course you can get into infinite regresses. Well, then, is that set, are those two sets a set which is separate from other sets by a distance of two sets? You get into these stupid questions, and if you think like Paul's thinking, those questions have make sense to you. But in, in, in a non- theistic worldview, those questions are not even askable questions. It's like asking, what's further north than the North Pole? You say, well, that's not a question to ask. If you insist on asking it because you like the question so much, you're asking an unaskable question that doesn't have a sensible answer to it. And then you pretend that you've caught us in some kind of a self-contradictory loop, when in fact it is you who is making the mistake of reifying uh, concepts. Uh, morality is not a thing. <clears throat> morality, according to my definition and my worldview, and by the way, my worldview goes way beyond atheism. Atheism is simply the absence of theism. As a human being, I embrace humanism and, and, and rationalism and, thing, and feminism and social causes that are above and beyond and have nothing to do with atheism. Uh, I'm a positive, proactive human being for reasons other than what I believe or don't believe. But morality, as I define it and as I use it, and as I think most humanists use it, it's not an atheistic statement, it's a humanistic statement. It is the intention to act in ways that minimize harm. A person who intends to act in a way that minimizes real harm in the world is, by definition, a moral person. Even if you fail, if that was your intention, then you are called a, a, a moral person. You may not be fully informed. So to be truly moral, you should try to be as informed as possible. To be informed means to use the tools of reason uh, to, to, to see if statements really are veridical or are true or not. So, obviously, the operative word here is the word harm. That's what we mean by morality. Morality is not something out there with absolute standards. Morality is a real down-in-the-dirt, real-world exercise of determining does this action result in more or less harm than other. And most of the time, or much of the time, there's no clear-cut answer. Sometimes it's muddy, it's gray, whereas Paul's worldview has everything in a black and white. Cut and, cut and dry, absolutistic. Some actions are always right, some actions are always wrong. In the real world, all of us, Paul included, we are situational ethicists. We, uh, we uh, base our morality on the outcome. For example, um, a woman comes pounding on your door. She's, she's bruised and bleeding, and she says her husband's trying to kill her. Uh, and so you bring her in the house, and you, you help her out, you care, you feel for her, you, you know, give her a place to stay. Later that evening, her husband comes banging on the door asking, do you know where my wife is? A moral person would lie to that man. A moral person would say, no, I don't. A moral person would not tell the truth to that man because 
there's no absolute rule that you should always tell the truth or never tell a lie. It depends on the situation. If Paul thinks that it's always wrong to tell a lie, I'm not second-guessing his morality, but if he thinks that telling lies are always wrong, then he would be in the danger of causing more harm to that woman than by telling a lie to them. So that's just one simple example. There are many examples in real life where moral dilemmas arise because we have a conflict of positive values. <coughs> Excuse me. 